Hi, I'm Frank Sesno at Planet Forward, coming to you from our studios at the George Washington University. We're talking with Robert Kenner and your questions, Planet Forward community questions for Robert Kenner. He's the director and producer of Food, Inc. So let's launch. It's good to see you. Good to be and here. And let me uh, start with a question from Richard Grossman. He says he's a fifth generation farmer, Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Your film, he says, uh, Food, Inc. spent considerable time examining the issue of food safety laws, such as the scene in former Congressman Phil English's office. Uh, is the inference of the film, he asks, about increasing food safety regulations actually not one of the causes of greater centralization as corporations customize regulations to remove their family, farmer corpora uh, family, family farm competitors? I think centralization is perhaps one of the biggest problems uh, in the food system and perhaps in the entire system in our country of selling not only food but everything we're dealing with. We have very few companies that are controlling the food that we eat today uh, and they have no connection to the community. Uh, they have no connection to the workers. Ultimately, they treat them as disposable parts. And I think that they are more interested in profits than they are in their consumers. So bottom line to fifth generation farmers like Richard? I think we need smaller farmers like Richard. And I think it's, uh, it's a great, uh, that, I think that's the goal. Are, th are they efficient and good for planet Earth? They're certainly good for planet Earth. Are they as efficient? Uh, perhaps they can't produce as many calories as cheaply. But again, I question the real cost, and we're not seeing the real cost when we go to the supermarket. Um, and uh, as we start to see the real cost, I think we'll agree that they are more efficient. Another question, Bob Murphy, he's a high school science teacher in Austin, Texas. I should tell you, all these questions come from people who are members of Planet Forward. So they brought their questions to us uh, for you in, in that way. He says, my students in AP Environmental Science recently watched Food, Inc. in class, which I'm sure makes you happy. Uh, they want to know what inspired you to do the research to make the film. I was, uh, well, I had read Eric Schlosser's book, Fast Food Nation, in 2002, and I was thinking of doing a documentary based on Fast Food Nation and actually got funded to do a film on Fast Food Nation. But as I proceeded, I began to realize uh, we quickly had discovered that fast food, people generally realized this, this wasn't good for you. And, but I realized that the whole supermarket has become industrialized in the same way that fast food had. Uh, and I wanted to make a film for everybody uh, because I don't think you can avoid this industrialized system. And we all consume it. And all we, of us. We all consume it. And, and uh, here's an, he says his students also want to know if you sense any changes as a result of your film. Well, I think our film has played into a growing food movement. Uh, I've been sort of knocked out by how large this movement is and how powerful this movement is. Uh, we've been to Washington with this. Uh, we've been brought into Washington. We've met with the Secretary of Agriculture. And basically, they've said, if there's a movement, we will follow. And you, your DVD is number one, right? Uh, our DVD was number one for a number of weeks uh, oh, due to uh, Oprah, uh, <laughs> and uh, people are viewing. But it's it's part of it, you know. We're, well, just wait till we're done with you. Here. Right. We're, we're going to explode. <laughs> but we're we're one of many spokes in a wheel, and this wheel is growing tremendously. Here's another question from Frank San Miguel. He could describes himself as a professional software geek, and full disclosure, he's my brother-in-law. But he wrote <laughs> in the following. Many of the historical changes in agriculture were driven by technology. Cotton gin profoundly affected the economics of slavery, tractor, combine, bioengineering, all the rest. Are there technological advances, new inventions on the horizon that could help reshape the business, he asks. Well, I certainly hope so. Uh, what would they be? You, you know, what do you think? well, I, I think we have to figure out how to be able to grow and produce food for what we have now six billion. We'll soon be up to nine billion. How are we going to feed everybody? But we have to figure out how to feed people in a way that we're not poisoning the earth and not polluting the water and not torturing the animals and destroying the consumers out. Finally, this one from Thomas Hardy. He's from uh, Washington State. I'm concerned about Big Business USA and the push to turn over profits in the face of helping the poor achieve familial food sustenance, which ought to include traditional seed saving, he says, in food preservation times of famine. Um, and he wants to see profit be a secondary uh, uh, option. Is that ever going to happen? Well, I think we have to figure out a way to make it happen. Otherwise, we're going to fall off a cliff. We have to figure out true value, not just short-term profit. And I think that's the key 
uh, to figuring out how to make a sustainable food system. Before I let you go, I just want to clarify this one thing. You're not saying that we shouldn't put the science and the engineering into making more uh, effective high yield crops, are you? I mean, are you saying we need to go all organic and just sort of let nature take its course and that's going to be sufficient to feed nine billion people? No, I think we need real science. Real science meaning that it's open to studying the facts uh, to figure out how to have greater yields, but also how to be more sustainable. Uh, I, I think that's the only way we're going to survive in the future. Uh, we need greater yields and we need more science. What was the single most eye-opening thing for you in this whole process that you, that you undertook? Here? I went to a hearing on whether we should be labeling cloned meat. I was unaware we had such a thing as cloned meat, but when the representative from the meat industry stood up and said, I think it's against the consumer's interest to give them this kind of information, uh, it would only be too confusing. I realized that we were making a film that was more than just about food. It was about our right to know. And this is happening continually in the world of food. We're being denied information. If we live in a free society, in a free market, I think we should have the right to know what we're buying. Robert Kenner, thanks very much. Really appreciate it. And thanks right. for taking questions of our Planet Forward members. This is one of the, one of the, one of the great things that you get if you're a member. <laughs> right. You can send in questions and ask them to people like you. Great. Appreciate Thank your time. Thank you. If you have comments or thoughts about this conversation that we've just had based on your questions, planetforward.org is the place to be. I'm Frank Sesno. Thanks for joining us.